I know a lot of you at home really like this sexy terminology that pops up in the golf instruction world from time to time. Right now, the big in vogue term seems to be shallowing the golf club. Well, guess what? That's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be working on a very simple drill that's gonna help you shallow out your golf swing, number one, but number two, help you preserve lag as far down into the hitting area as you've ever carried it before. The simple little drill I call the close the window drill. That's right, some of you may have seen me do this drill in the past. Let's call this the remastered version. I like to see you guys hit the golf ball really well. I like to see you hit it solidly. I like your golf swings to look really pretty and I like when you leave the golf course feeling really good about yourself. That's what I'm here for. And so if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's just make this really easy. We're not gonna go into this really long-winded dissertation talking to you about what your arms are gonna be doing. We're just gonna teach you the drill. Amateur golfers from the top of the swing down wanna start firing from their shoulders and their arms. And when you look at my, my trail arm and my body here, you're gonna see that there's a pretty good sized window that you could drive a Buick through, maybe even a Mack truck. Go right there between my body and my arms. The reason why that happens is, is because you start the processes of throwing the club from the top of the golf swing. It starts at your shoulder, out through your arm, out through your hand. And what that looks like from a down the line perspective is it looks like that. I got news for you. And you're probably not going to like this news. Once you start that process, you ain't gonna stop it. Well, you got a lot of momentum and inertia working against you at this point. And the club is gonna be going pretty fast. I don't know why you want the club to go fast over here. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We want the club to go fast down here. You start accelerating it over here, by the time it gets down to the bottom, it's gonna run out of gas. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on a simple little reference. When you get up to the top of the golf swing, I want you to take your trail elbow and I want you to bring it all the way down in front of your trail hip socket. So you can see on my pants here that I have a belt loop. This belt loop is a good reference point for you for where your hip socket is going to be approximately at. If you're one of those people that doesn't wear pants, maybe you wear a skort or maybe you wear stretchy pants or maybe you like to wear sweatpants, whatever it is, you can find the pointy pelvic bone on the front of your body and about two finger widths inside of that is gonna be right around the center of your hip socket. This is just a reference point. I want you to have reference points because what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna use these visuals and turn them into feels. And you're gonna take those two things and you're gonna try to marry them to one another so that now you have a drill that you can start to practice and start injecting slowly into your golf swing. So let's talk about how we're gonna do this. First thing I want you to do is I want you to understand that your arms on the way down are going to be working straight down. I want you to feel like your arms are moving independently from the body. What that'll feel like is when you get up to the top of the swing, if you didn't move your shoulders and you didn't move your arms and you just lowered your hands straight down towards your right hip, okay? That movement is gonna be taking place in the golf swing. It's independent of everything else that's taking place as far as your hips and your torso are concerned. Your hips are gonna be doing some very aggressive movement at the same junction of the swing. They're gonna be shifting and they're gonna be rotating. Those two movements are helping offset the vertical movement that you are putting in with your hands and your arms. That hip rotation is helping move your hands and arms out in front of you. Your job is to feel like you're getting the reference points in line with one another on the way down. You're gonna think about getting your trail elbow and your trail hip socket in line with one another and then you're going to stop. Now when you do this, what I want you to focus on is maintaining the angle that you have at the wrists and trying to maintain as much angle as you can between the forearm and the bicep. You're gonna start shifting your hips left and you're gonna stop. Now you're gonna check and make sure that your elbow pit is faced directly out at you at home. So if your elbow pit is facing directly out at you at home, you're gonna have your forearm facing in the same direction and your bicep's gonna be facing in the same direction. If your elbow pit is like that, then you're gonna see a window between the body and your arms on the way down. If your elbow pit's facing more out away from you, then you're gonna notice that your club is way too far from the inside and your hand and arm path is gonna be way too far in to out. Swing plane and path do play a very dynamic role in how the club is gonna be working down and through the point of contact. So we like to get things kind of down the middle of the road. So what I want you to focus on is on the way down, when your arms start working independently, is I want you to bring that trail elbow all the way down in front of your trail hip socket and I want you to stop. And I want you to check a few things here. Number one, is your elbow and your hip socket in line with one another? Yes, check. Is the club shaft parallel to the ground? Yes, check. Does my body feel like I am a crab on top of the golf ball? Yes, check. It's going to feel very crowded. Why is it gonna feel very crowded? Well, because most of you at home 
do the exact opposite. You start doing this. You start throwing the club out away from you. And what that leads to is that's a steepening move that you're gonna to try to offset with a shallowing move. That's when everything starts moving vertically to help get out of the way so you don't stuff it in the ground. So a lot of you, when you get into this position that down at the bottom, it's gonna feel like there's no way in God's beautiful green earth that you're gonna be able to release the club from here. But I promise you, when you get to Sunday and you start working through the ball striking series with me, you'll be able to deliver the club from here over to that side of the body. You're going to hit the golf ball like a stud or a studette. So we're gonna be working on trying to get your arms into that good delivery position. You're doing that with the close the window drill. So when that right elbow works down in front of your body, or your trail elbow, I'm sorry, left-handers, works down in front, you can see that there's no window through here on the way down. Watch very closely. Okay, now watch the wrong way. Okay, big window there. That's what we're eliminating. That's gonna make the swing plane look very steep. That's what's gonna make it harder for you to be able to preserve lag and be able to release the club properly. So now let's talk about how I want you to practice this. Generally speaking, you guys know that I like to do, you know, ratios. I like to do three, four, five practice swings. But how I want you to handle business here is this. First thing you need to have is a good visual in your brain. I know that I see that window. I know that I have a steep club. So you're gonna think about closing that window. You're gonna see it in your brain. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna feel it by bringing the arms down and focusing on your reference points. And you're gonna do that two, three, four times, okay? And then you're gonna start swinging through it slowly. Okay, it's gonna feel really weird. Okay. Okay, once you've got the feels and the visuals lined up, you've done some reps, you're feeling pretty confident with it, then you can go ahead and hit a shot. Do not hit a golf shot at full speed. Take a gear out of it. Try to visualize and feel those two things working together. And let's see how we do. It's a pretty good first rep there. So we're gonna do one more set. Gonna load to the top. Arms work down, elbow in front of the belt loop. Up to the top. Arms work down, elbow in front of the bell loop, checking to make sure my elbow pit's facing out, checking to make sure the club shaft is parallel to the ground. Once I feel it, I'm gonna make a swing. I'm visualizing the window close up. I've got it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit a shot, trying to do the same thing. Okay, I'm just gonna stay out here and hit balls all day. Simplifying the process and understanding that using your arms the proper way and feeling and seeing what your arms should be doing in the downswing and syncing that up with your hips, you're gonna shallow the club out perfectly and you're gonna set yourself up for a rock star delivery in just a matter of minutes. Yeah, doesn't mean that you own it and doesn't mean that you're gonna go out there and shoot 65, but you're gonna start the processes of getting 1% better every time you pick up a golf club. That's all you should be striving for is just getting a little bit better every time you pick up the golf club. Remember, Sunday's a big day for us. We're gonna start taking all of the stuff that we've learned to this point and we're gonna start putting it all together and you're gonna start working on some very broken down drills that are gonna teach you how to become a good ball striker once and for all, where you're gonna have complete control of the hitting area, you're gonna have complete control of the club face. By the time summer really rolls around and you get fully underway and you're ready to start playing in your member guests, your club championships, all of the events that you like to play in, you're going to be ready for business. Let's play some great golf. Remember, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Click the notification bell so that you get notifications anytime we put out new content click the like button below. That helps me and my psyche, helps me feel good about myself. I get pretty jazzed up for that kind of stuff. I actually get more jazzed up about just helping you guys play the game of golf. And so giving you little morsels of information like this and giving you little tools and different ways to practice this stuff and seeing and hearing the success that you guys are getting is what I love doing. So let's go out there and let's have some fun. I'll see you guys on Sunday for the next video.